Greetings and welcome guys, gals, and non-binary pals to another fashionably late review here at Words About Games. Amy here, and today I want to talk to you all about Trek to Yomi. First of all, I want to give out some general information about the game. Trek to Yomi was developed by Flying Wild Hog and Leonard Menciari and published by Devolver Digital and was released on May 5th, 2022 on PC via Steam, PlayStation 4 and 5 and on Xbox Series X and S and Xbox One. The game is also currently available in Game Pass at the time of recording. According to the game's store description, as a vow to his dying master, the young swordsman Hiroki is sworn to protect his town and the people he loves against all threats. Faced with tragedy and bound to duty, the lone samurai must voyage beyond life and death to confront himself and decide his path forward. Trek to Yami is one of those games that, like, as soon as you see a trailer or a screenshot or a gameplay snippet of it, you're automatically intrigued, or at least I am. A black and white samurai game set in the Edo period of Japanese history that is heavily inspired by classic samurai movies with Akira Kurosawa specifically coming to mind. The game is definitely aiming to evoke a very specific atmosphere and cinematic mood, and for the most part, it succeeds wildly on that front. It even takes what starts out as a pretty standard and fairly pedestrian samurai story to some really interesting narrative places in its latter half, and although this isn't quite as successful, I definitely applaud the effort. However, what doesn't succeed is everything else. There are two thoughts that really stick with me as I sit with my feelings about the game, and they are that Trek to Yomi feels like it wasn't so much style over substance, but rather that it was all style and pretty much no substance. It also felt like a game that was, by the closing chapters, more a test of my patience than a particularly enjoyable experience. But let's circle back for a moment and talk about the story. Trek to Yomi casts players as Hiroki and begins when he's a young boy being taught the ways of the samurai by his sensei. These lessons are swiftly interrupted when bandits attack the village and your sensei rushes off to deal with them, with Hiroki following. You arrive at the gates after dispatching a few bandits yourself, just in time to get curb stomped by the bandit leader and watch your sensei and said bandit leader kill each other. Hiroki promises his dying sensei that he'll watch over the village and protect Aoki, his young daughter. Next we flash forward to find Hiroki and Aoki as adults, the latter now running the village and the former in charge of the village's samurai. Bandits are once again rampaging through the countryside, and Hiroki goes to stop them. Uh, to cut a long story short, events transpire, things go badly, and Hiroki eventually finds himself on the titular trek to Yomi, Yomi being Japanese for the underworld. It's here, a good two plus hours into the story, that things actually start to get interesting, with Trek to Yomi introducing intriguing supernatural elements into its story as it attempts to dive deeply into the anguish Hiroki feels at having failed his sensei, his apparent love Aoki, and his entire village. Twice, in some cases. Now, you may notice there that I said the story gets interesting as opposed to saying it gets good, and there are a few reasons for that. That's because, despite the setup for Hiroki's fun time Yomi adventure being incredibly long, we never really get a sense of his actual character beyond some surface level and, frankly, formulaic motivations. And as he delves deeper into Yomi and confronts spirits, supernatural horrors, and his own failures as a samurai, we never actually delve any deeper into the character himself. He keeps repeating, or having other characters repeat for him, the same few lines of dialogue over and over about how he failed Aoki, his sensei, and his village. We never actually go any deeper into any of his own thoughts and feelings, or his motivations, or his history, and it's this lack of personality or character that really hurts the back half of Trek to Yomi's story, especially as we're given choices to make about Hiroki's motivations going forward. We're never really given too much of a sense of who Hiroki is, so it's difficult to connect with any of what I'm sure was supposed to be powerfully emotional scenes that take place later in the game, and the entire narrative just feels like it's treading water. It's kind of interesting when this standard samurai story takes on a supernatural twist, but it doesn't serve to improve the story or give us a deeper understanding of the game's main character. It simply seems to exist to give us different enemies to fight in increasingly surreal environments. But at least those environments are pretty to look at. Trek to Yomi is a stunningly well-presented game. I mentioned earlier that the game is clearly trying to evoke Kurosawa films and other classic samurai movies, and it does so with expertly. The developers clearly have a strong grip on the cinematic flair that served as Kurosawa's signature throughout his filmography, and there are some scenes or set pieces that are breathtaking in how they're presented or set up. A sword fight seen only through the shadows cast on the shoji, or crossing a bridge while the camera looks up from the river below it. 
just about every screen is framed marvelously, making Trek to Yomi a cinematic treat, especially if you happen to be a fan of classic samurai cinema. If I was judging this game on its visuals and cinematography alone, I'd say Trek to Yomi would be a tough game to beat in 2022. But that framing does have one negative consequence that raises its head sometimes, making it difficult to tell what's actually going on in combat. It's not something that happens too often, but it's pretty damn annoying when it does. You'll be marvelling at some really impressive direction or a tremendously framed shot, only to find that you also have to deal with a group of enemies, and suddenly that camera placement that looked so gorgeous before is now hampering your ability to see what you're doing. Take that example of crossing a bridge while the camera looks up from the river below. It's a beautiful shot, but when the bridge has railings and the enemies are charging you from both sides of it, it turns that marvel into frustration as you attempt to figure out who's winning the fight that's being obfuscated by the camera's placement. It's probably fortunate then that combat is pretty simplistic, but that too ends up harming the game more than helping it. Trek to Yomi wants to be a more complex action game than it actually ends up being, and who knows, maybe on higher difficulties that are unlocked after you complete the game, it is, but what Trek to Yomi actually is, once you figure it out, is a fairly simplistic button masher. You start out with a few basic moves and combos. Press X in conjunction with moving the analog stick and you'll perform a different quick attack. Press Y for a heavy attack and, you know, don't forget to dodge, block, or parry. As you progress through the game, you'll find a cavalcade of new combos that can, theoretically, make your engagements easier or more satisfying. But you don't actually need them. Or at least, I didn't. I tried using all of these different moves in the earlier segments of the game, but once I was in around Chapter 3, and I realised that I could use the down and X quick attack and then quickly block the inevitable counter-strike, I was set up for the rest of the game. Like, no matter what new enemy types Trek to Yomi threw at me, gunners, archers, spear users, teleporting enemies, it didn't matter. The same move carried me through the entire experience, and any attempt to mix things up on my part usually saw me take more damage or even die. The only other move I really needed to throw into the mix was a backward slash attack for enemies that were behind me, and the occasional ranged attack for obnoxious enemies that were staying as far away from me as they possibly could. They must have seen me chop down the last dozen guys with my unstoppable two-slice chop attack. This tactic even extends to the game's boss fights, albeit with the added caveat that, you know, I needed to figure out some specific attack patterns and timings. The only boss I got stuck on wasn't because I needed to change up my strategy or because of any particular escalation of difficulty, but because I needed to dodge through their legs when they attacked, which I didn't think to do for quite a few attempts, because dodging through or past enemies was literally not possible every single other time I tried it in the entire game thus far, which isn't necessarily relevant to my criticism of the game's lack of depth in combat, but it's 20 minutes of my life I'm not getting back and I wanted to get that off my chest. Combat as a whole just feels slightly off, like on an instinctual level. Trek to Yomi can be neatly divided into two different styles. There's exploration where you're given complete freedom of movement through environments to find hidden paths, upgrades, new combos, and so on. And combat, which is strictly limited to 2D planes akin to more standard 2D action games. Enemies, however, seemingly have access to the freedom of movement you lack. It makes sense, they generally jump out at you from in front of or behind of the track of movement that you're limited to, but sometimes they'll simply just chill out in this inaccessible space, rendering them impossible to attack. Which can be frustrating when you've made your way past several soul-weeding enemies to attack a guy with a big gun who poses a huge threat further away, only to find that you can't attack them because they're occupying a space outside of the 2D combat area, and your sword only functions in strictly straight lines. Then when you turn around to deal with the sword dudes coming up behind you, the gunner will make his way onto the battlefield and blast you in the back. Ouch. My annoyances with combat extend beyond just these issues out to almost every aspect of the experience. Animations aren't particularly fluid in any capacity, making fights less readable than they probably should be. Hitboxes will occasionally disappear. Like, there's been numerous times I've seen my sword make contact with an enemy character model, only for no hit to actually be registered. Parrying, built as a core part of the Trek to Yomi experience, comes with some fairly poor feedback which makes it difficult to figure out if you've parried an enemy at all, and worse still, to capitalise on a parry you have to press X at the moment you actually land the parry, making parrying a leap of faith as opposed to a move designed to capitalise on good timing. None of these issues are game breaking in any way, at least not 
individually, but when they're all here in the same game, it does start to take its toll. I stuck with the game thanks to its stunning visual presentation and to see if its story went anywhere after its interesting supernatural twist, but the lack of depth in both storytelling and combat made Trek to Yomi feel more like a test of patience the further I progressed through the game, and by the time I got to the end, I was quite happy to see the back of it, although I was lamenting the clear but untapped potential. Well, that's it for this review. Let us know what you think of the game. Did you like it? Are you in the middle? Or was it just not for you? Leave a comment down below. You know where the comments are. Or hit me up on Twitter. All the info is in the description. I'm going to get out of here because I have a ton more games to play and not enough time to play them all. So hit the subscribe button if you want more reviews. And until next time, I will see you later.